IM has unveiled the BlackBerry Bold 9700, a.k.a. the Bold 2. The Bold 9700 is slightly lighter and shorter than the original, but also slightly thicker. And the camera and screen resolutions are both now upped to 3 megapixel and 480x360 respectively, plus the usual 2009 specs like Wi-Fi, GPS, HSDPA, 3.5mm audio jack. What's not to like? Staying with RAM, the Storm 2 has also been launched with major improvements to the 3.2-inch touchscreen. Well, it couldn't have been worse, and almost identical specs to the Bold 9700. T-Mobile has launched what is the cheapest Android-based smartphone yet at only £180 in the UK. The Pulse is a monoblock design, has a 3.5-inch touchscreen and weighs 130 grams. Despite the price, it has HSDPA, Wi-Fi and a 3-megapixel camera. From what I can see, though, it doesn't seem to be a bona fide Google experience phone, so possibly no direct over-the-air OS upgrades. Only at the moment for Android 2.0 and only coming up on one device, the Droid, and only for one country, the USA, but surely to gradually extend across the world and onto other platforms is the new Google Maps navigation. At last, a full voice-guided navigation solution from the Big G, and of course, for free. Innovatively, you can search with voice instructions, and there's Google Street View to help you match up the instructions on screen with the real world. Really cool. Hey Steve, my name is Chris Patel. I'm calling from Philadelphia, USA. Uh, this is my first phone I used to use in 2005, O2XT Executive. Great uh, laptop kind of quality keyboard, huge QVG screen, huge 1700 million battery and 516 megahertz processor. After that, I tried this one, STC Touch Diamond, and I hate this OS, and I had this touch screen. I, that's the worst touch screen phone I ever tried. And I bought this one. Nokia 5800 Express Music, I love this phone. That's the best touchscreen phone Nokia ever made. And after that, I moved to the BlackBerry Cloud 8310. Uh, great keyboard and the communication system like email and everything is perfect for me. So, and but the lack of multimedia features and the OS is not that decent. But after that, I moved, I bought this one BlackBerry Bold and I love this. Uh, quality keyboard the great ever I ever, ever tried um, great VJ screen the toughness the back cover the steel frame everything is perfect with this phone powerful multimedia mobile everything is great so I love this phone thank you Steve and so to my much agonized over and long-awaited autumn 2009 top 5 and I'll admit it has been a tough decision and arguably a controversial one. So as not to inflict the Nokia N95 8GB on you yet again, I restricted myself to devices launched in the last year or so. And one other note, there's no Android in this lineup yet. I have absolutely no doubt that a really decent Android powered smartphone will appear in my top five before too long. I just haven't held one yet. It's also worth noting this isn't a top five, <laughs> it's a top six. I just couldn't restrict myself to just five of all the available devices I wanted to put in. So at number six, featuring a glorious screen and one of the best mobile QWERTY keyboards I've ever used, the HTC Touch Pro 2. It pitches itself as a mini laptop and to some extent it achieves this. It's hard to recommend the mishmash of UIs though, part iPhone wannabe finger optimized HTC Touch Flow 3D and part traditional stylus centric Windows Mobile, but hey, you can just disable touch flow and use the device as Bill Gates intended. At number five, it's the Nokia E75 recently raved about on this phone show. Uh, it's a smallish candy bar when needed, perfect for all round one handed use. No, wait, it's a full wide QWERTY communicator and after an indifferent start, it's been doing sterling work as my main smartphone for the last three months without putting a single foot wrong. Its only real downside is the smallish 2.4 inch screen and firmware that can be a bit slow for some operations, but overall another very solid choice and again great mainly metal build quality. And number four is a device that I haven't really used for more than a few days personally, but which I've had so many positive testimonials about, you saw one earlier in the show, and I do love the hardware that I really, really wanted to give it some kudos here, the BlackBerry Bold, despite being about to be superseded, as you saw in the news, is a reassuringly solid choice, again like the E75, with great build quality, and should do just about anything you want it to do. 
At number three, widely criticised by many reviewers as, quote, old-fashioned on account of its uh, unfashionable Nokia N95 style form factor, the N86 8 megapixels does impress hugely within this shell. Though only 2.6 inches, the screen is OLED and utterly gorgeous in all but the strongest sunlight. The camera is astonishing in terms of colours and low-light performance, certainly the best 8 megapixel phone around. Uh, and the video quality you can judge for yourself, every phone show is shot as this is on the N86 itself. And there's a wealth of gadgets, an FM transmitter, iPlayer downloads, digital compass, 8 gigabyte mass memory, large battery for its size, and so on. And on my phone, at least, superlative build quality. They bring the N86 deservedly in at number three in my top five. Yet again, I find it impossible to rate this next device at number one. It's the Apple iPhone 3GS at number two. Faster and more graphically impressive and with a far better camera than early iPhones and with Apple's legendary desktop and cloud integration, the 3GS has to be somewhere near the top of the tree though. And yet I find it hard to wholeheartedly recommend it to everyone. No proper multitasking, so you're forever reopening apps and explaining to people why they can't have that streaming music running in the background while they get on with something else. And do you really need 80,000 apps? Just finding the dozen or so that are really good and right for you is enough. Uh, I'd rather see an iPhone app store with 800 apps, all of which are of a really high standard. And then there's the price. Even more so than any of the other choices here, you've got to sign your life away to own an iPhone 3GS. Or at least that's what it seems like to me. But at number one, and bearing in mind this is a personal top five, I wanted a phone which had a physical QWERTY keyboard for quick messaging on Twitter and a large screen for videos, web and games and an FM transmitter for music and podcasts in the car and BBC iPlayer download compatibility for watching the best TV programmes while travelling and all the usuals, GPS, great camera, branded lens, Wi-Fi, 3.5G, there literally is only one choice in the world, the only phone which does everything I need. Controversially, I'm sorely tempted to name the Nokia N97. No! Fixed after the first production run uh, with a new shielded antenna. Uh, anyone with this problem, just go to your local Nokia care point. I did, and mine works fine now. No! Fixed with a redesigned protective slide and back shell. Again, see Nokia CarePoint. No! The keyboard's okay for short texts and Twitter length messages, and keys now enter their symbol without using the function key if you hold them down for a second or so. It was one of the fixes in the version 20 firmware, which is out about now. No! Also fixed in the version 20 firmware, the N97 is now working smoothly with iPhone-like kinetic scrolling everywhere as well. But I do appreciate I've had to throw a huge bunch of caveats in here. And to be honest, it's a little on the large side and trying to use it one-handed sees me regularly nearly dropping it. And the black is very plasticky. Which is why my actual number one phone for late October 2009 is the Nokia N97 Mini now available in the shops. It fixes everything about the N97. It's slightly smaller, so it's easier to hold. It's got a slimmer metal back plate. It's got full kinetic scrolling from day one. There's no camera protector to get scratched. The GPS works fine. There's an extra 256 megabytes of flash memory for disc C, and the screen angle is more laid back. A big improvement. And so the Nokia N97 Mini is, in my opinion, the hottest, most functional and most useful phone in the entire world. Now I'll be revisiting this top five in the first show of 2010, so I'll see you then. It's that time again, time again for me to beg. I've been keeping the phone show going through thick and thin, thanks to a handful of commercial sponsors every now and then, and thanks to individuals who have sent money in by PayPal. Researching, writing, filming and perhaps most of all editing each show takes about 20 man hours, believe it or not, and the only way I can fit this in is by not doing a conventional job and considering this part of my employment. If I've helped you make a good decision on what phone to buy or not to buy, if I've informed and entertained you, then please consider sending in a donation via my PayPal page. There's even now a monthly price of a pint of beer subscription option. <laughs> Thanks in advance if you can help.